Hello, this is Xbox Ahoy, and this is the bonus footage from my time with the crossbow, in which I'll be taking some of the comments left on the main video and providing answers or rebuttals, whatever's required. Now, the prevailing theme this week was largely centred around the final kill cam which I featured, as literally hundreds of people took the opportunity to take a tired meme and further beat it into the ground. As Play With Niz says, Oh god, the final kill just had to be an arrow to the knee, didn't it? But that's enough Skyrim for now. Hopefully someone left a real question for me to answer. Uh, Sao Paulo or Bust asks, Hey Stuart, parabolic flight trajectories remind me. Have you ever played Tribes Ascend? I did try the beta. Um, I played a little bit, maybe an hour or so, just mucking around with the mechanics. But I haven't played it seriously. I, I can't ski for the life of me. I would give it a fair shake now that um, it is actually released, but I have a whole pile of games to play and scant time to enjoy them, so learning a new multiplayer game isn't high on my priorities. Okay, Skullkiller456 asks, Stuart, what was your most challenging Black Ops review to make when it came to getting the clips for the weapon review? Uh, generally speaking, it's the single shot weapons that um, are generally the hardest to get clips for. The sniper rifles probably have the lowest yield in that they aren't particularly suited to an aggressive playstyle. So the, the, the sort of the fast paced clips that I'm looking for are, are generally a bit rarer. Special weapons tend to be quite difficult as well. The crossbow's okay. I didn't have too bad of a time with it. But the ballistic knife, I guess, was probably on the, the harder scale of things. Pretty much anything else is is pretty easy. If it, if it If it's automatic, or even if it's a burst fire weapon, you can normally just spray and get a few kills and call it a clip. Ugh, talking about that kill cam again with Master of the X 2029. Question, did you intend that arrow to the knee final kill cam? Well, I, I take what I can get, really, with uh, as far as the kill cams are concerned. In Team Deathmatch, you've got, what, a 1 in 12 chance of getting a kill cam, assuming that everybody has the same number of kills, which obviously isn't always the case. I, I do, you know, normally get a decent share of kills, but with the crossbow... My, uh, my performance is a little muted. I can't exactly go on massive tears with it. I think I got two kill cams. I recorded about, I want to say between 15 and 20 games, and I got two kill cams. So that's about what you'd expect, typical yield-wise. But unfortunately, one of the kill cams was, I believe it was a grenade kill. You might say, maybe there was a couple of kill cams uh, that I didn't use. But I only got the one stick kill, which is uh, the one where I stick the guy in the knee. I mean, of course, I'm grateful for it. It's it's always nice to get a, a nice clear kill cam with a weapon. But no, I didn't set it up or didn't plan to hit him in the knee or anything like that. I just take what I can get, really. Annihilator Xbox asks, Stuart, have you ever thought of hiring anybody for help? E.g. one person gets the clips and you can do the editing. By doing this, you can save time and more videos can be produced. I suppose um, if we're talking about upscaling production, then uh, ultimately you are going to have to get you know, more manpower. There's only so much that I can do on my own. So, uh, yeah, I've considered it, but it's a question of, you know, how do you do it when you're talking about staff? Involving other people sort of complicates things. You've got issues of, of earnings and payment, and... I mean, that is one thing. You do lose a certain portion of your income if you're, if you're paying somebody else to do something for you. And it's a question of then, is it worth it? And I suppose if, I, if I'm making more videos, then yeah, of course it would be worth it. I mean, if I had sufficient income and it was regular enough, then I'd love to, you know, maybe buy a premises, open a studio and, you know, maybe have a whole team working for me. That'd be brilliant. But that kind of level, I think, would be reliant on a higher level of income. For the time being, I'm quite happy to truck on alone. We'll see how things go with Black Ops 2, eh? Wally1994 asks, Stu, I was wondering... When you're doing your Drinks Ahoy guides, how do you decide which drink to cover? And if I may make a suggestion, please cover Jägermeister or the Dutch Grolschbier. I hope you like them. Well, when I first started, I just... Well, the first one I did, Copperberg. That was just kind of on a, on a whim one Christmas. The ones that I've been putting out recently, the, um, <laughs> the spate of pale lagers, they were just sort of plucked out of a random crate that I got. But uh, it's clear to me now that obviously I need a bit more variety. Just doing lager after lager after lager is is getting a, a bit dull. So the system that I use now, and I have a system, I do, I produce in batches of four. And uh, to get as much variety as possible, I 
I basically have, in each of the four slots, I'll choose one type of beverage. So going forward, one of the four is going to be a pale beer, either a lager or a, a vice beer or something along those lines. The second slot is going to be something darker, a dark beer, because I've got a lot of beers. Beers are going to be, you know, they're going to be the mainstay. But the second slot is a dark beer, so a porter, a stout, or some other sort of uh, interesting ale. Just to sort of mix it up again, so it's not all sort of pale stuff. We've got something with a bit of colour in there. Third slot is going to be something strong, which is going to be either a hard liquor, like a vodka, or a whiskey, or a gin, or a liqueur. I've done Midori already, but there's going to be more stuff like Midori. I've got a, I think I've got a couple of bottles of liqueur floating around. Or potentially something else. I've got a bottle of Brewdog Tactical Nuclear Penguin, which is technically a, well, it's kind of a fortified stout. But it weighs in at 32% alcohol by volume, so I think it qualifies as something strong. So that one's coming. And in the final slot, that's my oddball slot. In this one, uh, pretty much anything else, as long as it's not a pale lager, a dark, a beer, or a, uh, a hard liquor, then I can cover it in that slot. So soft drinks will feature in this oddball slot, in addition to stuff like cider as well, and uh, any other sort of odd stuff. I also quite like the idea of doing sort of double episode specials. I've actually got one coming up. It's, it's two lagers, which is a little dull, but they uh, they share a common manufacturer. So I'm doing basically two beers from the same stable. I think that's episode 12 and 13. I'll probably upload those. I'll probably upload one on a Thursday, one on a Friday. I think that makes the most sense. But I can see myself doing some uh, double specials, maybe even some triple specials in the future. So... Uh, Although I'll sort of treat it as a batch of four with four slots, it might actually be five or six videos that I'm producing in one. For instance, I'm planning on doing a gin and a tonic in one slot, so that will be for the liquor slot, but it will be two separate videos and they'll cover a tonic. Anyway, as far as actually picking the stuff, uh, I have kind of a crate of stuff. Stuff that's in the queue for review. I've got about Probably somewhere in the region of 50 varieties of, uh, of beers and ciders in a crate. And on top of that, I've got maybe 10 bottles of spirits to cover. So that's, what, 60? In addition to that, I've got a couple of soft drinks as well, and I'll, I'll slip in some other stuff that I can get hold of. So I've got this uh, quite, quite a large pool of potential drinks that I, I've got available to me. And so when it comes to production, I'll just pluck out four that strike me as interesting. And I'll, I'll try to go for the stuff that I got first, so that, you know, nothing goes out of date. So yeah, that's that's pretty much how I determine the uh, series order for Beverage God Express. As far as Jägermeister, I actually do have an unopened bottle of Jägermeister. That is probably going to be covered at some point. I can't say when precisely. Grolsch? I actually don't have Grolsch. In fact, if memory serves me correctly, I don't have any Dutch beers at all. But Grolsch is commonly available here, in fact. Heineken is as well. So, I'll, I guess, if I'm ever at a loss for the uh, the pale beer slot, then I might pick some up. But uh, I have <laughs> I have no shortage of lagers at the minute. Andyman5556 has a go at pun writing himself. As he says, I thought the pun was going to be like, with this weapon you'll be turning a lot of adventurers into town guards. Well, I, I deliberately tried to avoid any sort of uh, Skyrim references. It, uh, like I say, it's a little bit tired. Fire and Kid asks, Stuart, do a vlog or house tour, please! I don't know, for me that sort of thing kind of crosses a, a boundary of things that I want to do. I don't want to be a vlogger. And I don't want to particularly open up my sort of, my dwelling for, for critique or, or you know, judgement. I guess I'm quite sensitive to criticism. I don't mean that in a bad way, but what I do mean is when somebody posts a criticism of a video that I've done, I will sort of take it to heart. Not, again, not in a bad way. I'll, I'll understand where they're coming from and I'll, and I'll use that information to improve. But when it comes to stuff like, uh, you know, your appearance or, or the house in which I live in, these are things that you can't fix in the editing room, you know? So I guess I don't really want to invite that sort of uh, level of personal criticism. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not like I live in a mud shack or anything. I own my own home and it's... It's a satisfactory enough three-bedroom semi-detached house in Manchester. To me, it's home and it's comfortable enough. 
but as curious as you lot can be, sometimes, you know, you've got to maintain your privacy. Okay, Skiller HD asks, Hey Stu, will you ever continue the Homefront guides? Because I actually really enjoyed the first one. Now I've learned better than to never say never. Uh, I mean, at one point I uh, archived off the Black Ops project folder. My intent was, you know, clearly to not return to it, but then here we are. But as far as the Homefront stuff is concerned, uh, it's unlikely I'm going to return to it. However, at some point in the future, I wouldn't mind doing videos similar to it. Not for Homefront, but for other games instead. I have kind of a vague series concept that uh, I'll probably develop over the course of the next year or so. Kind of like a uh, sort of a 10 minute introduction to multiplayer for any given game. But uh, I'm thinking for, you know, a post-COD world here. I don't know precisely how it'll pan out. Luigi Rig asks, Hey Stu, are you going to finish the Weapons of Modern Warfare series? Or just like a time killer until Blobs 2 comes out? Well, I suppose to satisfactorily finish the Weapons of Modern Warfare series, I'd have to do what? I think what, there's 50 weapons in total? And the, well, there aren't enough weeks in the year to do that. I'm actually going to cap that series at 10 episodes, which means we've got the MP7 coming up this Sunday, and then there'll be one more episode after that, and then that'll be it. I may return to it at some point. There may very well be a season two of The Weapons of Modern Warfare, but that depends on what else is occupying my time. Mr. Walnut4 says, Stu, I noticed you used the BC designation for referring to before Year Zero, but isn't it technically the BCE, before Common Era designation, or is this something exclusive to America? I, uh, I considered using BCE instead of BC, but I think, I think BC is probably the more common usage in my experience. And I think even the most hardcore secularist would be uh, hard pushed to be offended by that. Whereas I suspect the Christians are a more sensitive lot. I don't know, it's not one of those distinctions that comes up often, really. I don't often work with weapons that were uh, <laughs> developed um, before year one. Fox Himura says, was a smart idea to use the PM63 and the crossbow at the same time, so the clips gathered serve for two episodes. Well, it might have been, except it only really occurred to me that the crossbow would have been a good pairing for the PM63 right after I'd finished recording. So I had to, uh, of course, yeah, I had to go out again and uh, go for some crossbow clips. But then, to be honest, that probably makes it easier in discerning which is a PM63 clip and which is a crossbow clip. And if I recorded both at the same time, there'd only be one bonus footage video. So, there you go. Uh, doing your MA says, Stuart, do you play Nazi Zombies? I wouldn't say I was a regular player. I mean, I've certainly played Nazi Zombies. I've I had the DLCs for Black Ops as well, so I've played the, uh, the other maps. But I haven't played them extensively. I wouldn't consider myself to be very good at Nazi Zombies. So I do play it, but not extensively. I quite often see people asking me if, you know, zombies videos are a potential, and I suppose they are. I mean, uh, looking at Black Ops 2, uh, the zombie content for that looks pretty gosh darn good, actually. It looks like they've expanded it greatly, which uh, could mean I do end up playing it regularly, and if I'm playing it regularly, then the chance of me doing videos for it is mid to high. Insane Rocher says, you are close to the 100th video. Are you going to do anything special? Um, probably not. Maybe. I don't know. What could I do that's special? Every video is special in its own little way. According to my dashboard, anyway, I've got 104 videos at the moment. And even if you um, exclude the ones at the start of my channel's lifespan, which are now private, if you include Weapon Guard Express, I would have hit 100 videos with the MP7 coming this weekend. But anyway, it's a fairly meaningless number. Be nice, I suppose, if I could do Behind the Lines episode 2, but I'm not sure if that'll be ready for then. Reaper2298 says, Stuart, Simpsons, or Futurama? Has to be Futurama, I suppose. I'm still watching The Simpsons, I still tune in even for the new episodes. And I enjoy them, you know, they're still... they're still pretty good. Of course, they're not quite up to the standards of your... I suppose with, what is it now, 500, 600 episodes, things start to get a little bit threadbare. But no, Futurama is definitely, uh, at least as far as new episodes are concerned, the better source of entertainment. Mr. Table Turns asks, Xbox Ahoy, USA versus Russia, who would win? 
well, probably the cockroaches. I mean, assuming we're talking no all-out nuclear war here. If we're talking something like football, then, oh, I don't know. Anyway, that was the, uh, the last question I picked out. Unusually, I, I normally run out of footage before I run out of questions. But never mind, I've got maybe, what, 30 seconds left? Uh, something like that, yeah. That's just enough time to do an outro and, uh, and talk about what's coming next. I'm actually recording this on Friday morning, but I probably won't upload it until Saturday, as I've got Beverage Guide Express to go out today. So I hope you enjoyed Beverage Guide Express yesterday, on Friday. I know, yes, it's another pale lager. But I am not deaf to your criticism, I have mixed it up. Coming up next is a whip beer, then you've got a double lager special, then you've got a vodka, then you've got a cider, then you've got a bitter. And going forward I'll try and keep things as, as diverse as possible. So that's Beverage God Express, coming up next on Xbox Ahoy is the MP7 Weapons of Modern Warfare, the penultimate episode. And the week after that will be the FNFAL for Black Ops. So, I hope to see you then, and until next time, farewell. <laughs>